Welcome back to another episode of Living Room Logic, but this time we're going to be talking about our favourite friends, the dinosaurs who got hit by a giant pebble <laughs> that ended their entire existence. But, you know, that also kind of gave space for the entirety of humanity and everything you love to exist, so good on that <laughs> But, but it's really interesting because when I think of dinosaurs i kind of think of crocodiles on steroids <laughs> because when i was when i was a wee lad i loved dinosaurs i had lego dinosaur thingies i had those little weird plastic really hard plastic dinosaurs as well yeah. that were like green and gray and all of this different stuff right and i remember seeing mm -hmm, jurassic mm -hmm. park which keep in mind i was very very young and it kind of scared me and it was like as i got older <laughs> it went from a horror movie to a scary movie to oh my god this is like a nature documentary and really informative mm -hmm. to kind of almost like satire now because you kind of look back and you're like mm, that's not really it is it because i i think of dinosaurs literally like giant alligators and giant geckos i think of all of these different things that they were just like lizards and I think the reason they think about it this way is because they kind of looked at what we have today. They looked at animals today that have similar bone structures and similar things like that. And they followed that evolutionary lineage on and they basically got the skeleton involved. Mm -hmm. They basically got the skeleton of your T-Rex or your Brontosaurus <laughs> and effectively slapped a skin on it from something we actually know. And we're like, this is probably what it looks yeah, like. Yeah. And it, it was really, really like that. And I think when you look at things like um, the original Jurassic Park, and as you go up, if you actually watch all of the Jurassic Parks, you can see that they slightly change the way the dinosaurs look over time. Mm. Because it stops being shiny and grey and really bad CGI to slightly better CGI, <laughs> which is, you know, great for technology, yeah. but still scientifically iffy. But if you watch the most recent ones... They kind of ruined the dinosaurs for me because uh, they kind of have these pathetic feathers hanging off them. <laughs> and <laughs> and you're kind of looking at it like, I'm sorry now, but these dinosaurs are meant to be giant alligators or giant geckos. Mm -hmm. And um, they're kind of dressing them up as if these dinosaurs live in a native tribe. And when they find a feather, they attach it to their forehead as like a symbol of dominance or a right. symbol of success as a hunter. Yeah. And you just see it hanging off their mm -hmm. arms. <laughs> I'm sorry, Aiden, but that's that's not a velociraptor. <laughs> you know, that is not what I understand as dinosaurs. And um, yeah, I'm probably going to refuse to believe this. And I'm probably going to deny you ruining my childhood memories of what dinosaurs are because the evidence as Aiden's going to talk us through is that maybe they did have those feathers and the fact that we're only getting this science now is something that I'm going to hold against toy companies from my childhood forever mm -hmm. because I stood on so many of those plastic dinosaurs Aiden <laughs> and hurt my foot if only they and had they feathers were... if they had feathers Think of the injuries that would have been avoided. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think... Tell, set my case for suing these toy okay. companies. I'm coming after them. Yeah, <laughs> and I think as well, like, I'm the exact same, Andrew. Like, when I was young, uh, Toy Story, that was probably the, one of the first dinosaurs I ever saw. Um, and he's a, a T-Rex and he's, like, green and scaly. And so I also had this preconception from a youngest age that dinosaurs are like reptiles and um weirdly enough actually um as we talk about the feathers and uh feathers are most known to be on birds um dinosaurs yeah. are actually pretty bird like and i have liar <laughs> <laughs> liar don't no. ruin it um liar. but not all of them um and and there's it, it it actually becomes very complicated but um the story kind of started this whole bird like dinosaur what the heck's going on here and bird and dinosaurs having feathers like birds actually started in the late 1800s a scientist found 
one of the most beautifully preserved specimens. Again, we will go back to this German word that I like to bring up German words, but it's the same one from a previous episode called Lagerstatten, um, uh, Lagerstatten. which is perfectly preserved. Um, you need to have the most, I guess, unfortunate series of events for a, a animal to become perfectly preserved. Uh, first of all, there needs to be volcanic activity nearby. Um, and it needs to be a certain type of volcanic activity where the the ash is not too hot. It's really fine, really fine particles, much finer than sand. Really, you're talking mm. silt. Like, you can almost, you know, it's almost okay. soft when you feel it with your hand. It's really difficult to find, you know. You, we're not used to... Um, feeling uh, volcanic silt, you know, but w so it, when there's a volcanic eruption and, and this sort of plume of uh, volcanic cloud falls on something after it's died, so they need to just have met their demise, unfortunately, very fortunately for paleontologists, um, but very unfortunately for them, in a semi-marine, semi-aquatic place, maybe a pond, maybe a pool, um, and then mm. to be overlain by this silt. So it's a really weird situation. And to be honest, that's why we don't have so many of these beautifully preserved uh, fossils with feathers on them. Dinosaurs with feathers or somewhere uh, evolutionarily just between birds and dinosaurs. That's why there are so few. Um, but this one of the first ones is, is a species called Archaeopteryx. And what's really interesting about it is... Um, and th this was actually found, um, yeah, as I said, in, in the in the late 1800s. So we actually knew that this existed. We just didn't know where it was. Uh, the the researchers at the time thought it was a bird, of course, because it had lots of feathers on it. But mm -hmm. because with genetic dating um, in the 90s and on into the 2000s, uh, basically the use of computers and evolutionarily evolution evolutionary biology um, with IT with computers with huge data sets that could sift through them using a computer they actually figured out that this archaeopteryx was evolutionarily right in the middle between birds and dinosaurs and it kind of it, nothing nothing really happened right up until the the 1990s and the 2000s about this um uh, and uh, you know I, i'll actually say it it was more like the 80s but still from from it being found a hundred years before, it, it's crazy how nothing happened for a hundred years in terms of our our perception mm -hmm. of dinosaurs. And even in the two thousands and in the nineties, we got Jurassic Park, and this is right in the middle of all of this unfolding. And so it was really interesting. But unfortunately, Steven Spiel Spielberg just got it wrong. Um. No, he, no didn't. he didn't, of course. Yeah. But he still made damn good <laughs> movie series, and it's fantastic. And actually, there are a lot of things that he got quite right. Um, one example was the uh, the T Rex, and the mm -hmm. T Rex is actually quite close in its evolution to um, Velociraptors, um, okay. and although they're called theropods, and birds are also theropods, so they're very quite close in mm -hmm. their evolutionary. Um, similar similarity um but t-rexes have scales on them and they don't really have a lot of evidence that they have feathers whereas they have lots of evidence okay. now that velociraptors definitely did have feathers um and so they don't actually have direct evidence of beautifully preserved feathers but they have they found that um birds have this weird wrist um, where they're able to pull it back right behind their their ulna, and that means the ulna is on the the outer side of your oh, of like your arm, backwards. and that means that they can put yeah, so they can put their wings away, fully extend it like you know 180 degrees back, oh, cool. uh, and and have it vertically back, and so that makes sense to put your yeah. your big long feathers away yeah. <laughs> when you're when you're yeah, running, um, and. So they actually find in pretty much all Velociraptor um, specimens, they have this thing called a, it's called a quill center. And so it is exactly where 
feathers would have been placed in. And so although they didn't preserve... Okay, that's really cool. Yeah, that's how they found that out. They know that in all modern birds, they, this this structure on the wrist is, is has only one purpose, and that's to place feathers in. Um, and so if you think of velociraptors, they have... And is, is, that, is that on the bone? Yeah, it's it's a structure in the bone. So that's how they're able to to kind of go away from this scaly velociraptor. Oh, cool. I mean, there's there is one thing that Jurassic Park got quite wrong to do with velociraptors in uh, particular. They were not that large. They were like I don't know, like uh, fifty centimeters tall. So they 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 were quite small. They may be the size of a turkey. Uh, so a lot smaller. You yeah, know I heard this before. How depressing. I know, I know. But they still like they were yeah. still a How do you get that wrong? Yeah, I guess <laughs> How do you I, get that wrong? I guess like, they did they not they, have a full skeleton and they were like, Maybe we've only found the young ones. Yeah, they exactly. Were bigger well no, <laughs> I actually think it was a a Hollywood decision, you know, to make them big and bad because oh. they were, you know, they actually in the movie they have these small dinosaurs as well. And so that that a couple of people do yeah, get yeah. killed by the smaller ones, and so that's what they would kind of be more like. But you know, they would have had plumage; they would have been feathery, gotcha. dark, dark down, down, and 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 long kind of feathers coming d- draping down from their their claws and their arms. Yeah, yeah. Um, and although velociraptors, we really don't think that they use these for flight. They could definitely have used them to help them move through the air in terms of running at high speeds mm-hmm. and maneuvering, and it helps. It would probably help them with traversing quickly, and so. Gotcha. You know, you don't need feathers for this, but um, because just like the T Rex, we kind of figure out that these were quite active animals, especially because, um, at the start of as you said, when they were lumbering crocodiles or uh, they were, they, that's what we thought they were. Crocodiles and alligators have their arms splayed out on the sides of their body and their belly drags on the ground. Yeah. And that's just to help um, th- use less energy. They can just basically drag themselves along um, at, a, at a pace, whatever <laughs> pace they want, usually quite slow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but, um, Ah, yes, the slug model. <laughs> the slug model, exactly. <laughs> the height of yeah, evolution. Yeah. I hope we. I, I think with obesity rates, we're slowly going back. Uh- <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, but what's cool about, of course, we actually thought uh, the earliest T-Rex fossils, we didn't know where the legs went because they weren't never attached to the, the vertebrae, to the, to the spine in the ribcage. So f- until we got, got a better fossil, of the legs being directly underneath the body, bipedal, only two legs, mm. um, we realized, wow, they're, they must be quite active and they must need a lot of energy and they must be quite high energy. And this is the idea of um, cold-blooded versus warm-blooded. And this is a big debate. Um, going back to crocodiles and alligators... Um, they are cold-blooded animals. They require external sources to stay warm. That's why they bait when you see them sunbathing on rivers and stuff, and they just look like they're chilling because they are. They need it in the morning. They need to for for pretty much a, a quarter or half of every single day. They just they're just taking in heat. Um, whereas we ma- like mammals and birds are endotherms, so we actually use the metabolism in our body and the insulation of our skin and fat to insulate all the heat that's made. Um, and, and that works really yeah. well for kind of more active animals. Do you know what I mean? So the the, I do, the I do. idea that if dinosaurs, or at least um, this group of dinosaurs, meat-eating dinosaurs called theropods, um, them having feathers means, oh, well, maybe they're, they're not fully cold-blooded. Um, maybe they're actually warm-blooded. And the debate is is it's mm. still ongoing because they share traits of both reptiles and mammals and birds and they're 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 somewhere in between. And you actually have to think of dinosaurs as this huge lineage as well, because 
this whole time I've just been talking about a small group of dinosaurs called theropods, there are actually yeah. a, a whole other side of dinosaurs called um, bird-hipped dinosaurs. It's kind of uh, ironic that the bird-hipped dinosaurs didn't evolve into birds. <laughs> the, the they're yeah. actually the the dinosaurs that evolved into birds are actually called lizard-hipped dinosaurs. So whoever made that mistake, <laughs> they they made a boo boo. Okay, but um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but <laughs> I know it's kind of weird. But there's actually a, a one branch, yeah, yeah, one branch away from these theropods, these meat-eating ones, uh, T. Rex, Velociraptors, and going off, yeah, birds. The other branch yeah. is are these dudes called Diplodocus and other things. They're called sauropods. They're the big uh, plant-eating dinosaurs. You know, in Jurassic Park, you see those big lumbering kind of peaceful animals that are just huge. Um, and, and they eat vegetation. Well, they didn't have yeah. feathers. So they were fully scaled. And so, That's so it crazy. is. So crazy. It, it's it's strange because you would think that they would have feathers, and then that that confuses. Well, where did the the feathers evolve? Well, because they don't have them. Well, it probably evolved later on at near the theropods, um, the meat eating dinosaurs yeah. like T Rex and Velociraptor. But T Rex don't really have much evidence for feathers, so. Um, there's about a third of these guys who don't have feathers, and the other two thirds of the di those dinosaurs do. And that that other group, the bird-hipped dinosaurs, um, I'll give you some examples of those things like Triceratops. You know those cool ones with the horns? Um, they look yeah. badass. They're they're really cool. And um, other they're like duck-billed uh, dinosaurs. I, I if you could imagine that they kind of have a large duck bill like a platypus, and then the back of their head yeah. comes out like that. Um, and the Stegosaurus, you know the one with the big spiked tail, and it kind of has a big armored body and spines, big spiny scales up its back. Mm -hmm. Um, they're all in that group, and there's not a lot of evidence for them having feathers, except for. <laughs> There is a type of horned dinosaur, the the Triceratops, who the specimen had really long, plumy feathers on its tail, kind of like what? kind of like a peacock. So, or or that's and crazy. if you could think, it's kind of like an you would think it's an ornamental thing. That's what peacocks use their big, beautiful feathers for, is as a a mating in as part of a, a mating ritual. And so, you know, yeah. these long, they're called long filamentous feathers. And so if you get that in these triceratops, then did they evolve those themselves, like again on their own? Or, or it, did the evolution of feathers happen way before? So could it kind of be like a um, converging evolution? That yes. Maybe feathers were kind of beneficial and maybe two different lineages one with feathers but maybe they started getting feathers in another one because it was proving to be useful is that about right exactly so but so that's one so the the first idea is that feathers are an ancestral trait a a deep ancestral Ugh. trait that the dinos depending on what your niche is as in what your what your purpose in the ecosystem is feathers you can kind of turn on the gene for feathers or turn it off using natural selection survival of the fittest based on whether it was useful or not and you could turn it off if it wasn't useful um by turning off i mean that it, it evolves out of the species rather than evolving in and so that's one side of the coin. That's what most are not, what half of paleontologists think. And then the other half think of this other thing that it's very possible that you can evolve feathers several times in this very large evolutionary tree. Because you have to yeah. think of dinosaurs. We think of dinosaurs as very, being very similar, but triceratops are, and birds or or a triceratops and a t-rex are very different say as different of course, as yeah, yeah. us to a plant you know um or us yeah. to the furthest uh, um to a crocodile so um yeah that's cool it, it's it's 
there's this huge diversity and uh, the idea that Triceratops evolved it, or not Triceratops, but one of the horned dinosaurs evolved it themselves again um, on their own is also yeah. um, supported by the fact that going even further back away from uh, before dinosaurs, there were these things called ornithod- ornithodirons, and they include the pterosaurs. And pterosaurs are those big cool. gliding bird looking dinosaurs, but they're actually not dinosaurs, yeah. which is the funny thing. They they evolved before dinosaurs, um, no but they oh, that's so yeah, cool. but they they did exist also during the time of dinosaurs in the Triassic and the Jurassic and gotcha. the Cretaceous, and then they died yeah. when that pebble hit Earth. Uh, unfortunately, um, but the f- weirdest thing is that pterosaurs also have a type of feather called um it's called pico uh pico filaments which are pico is just a a, a, um there's micro nano pico and pico is the smallest um and it's almost like a fuzz it's like a later on they call it a dino fuzz in some of the dinosaur species but this is like a taro fuzz and so they also had this type of (laughs) filament that isn't a mammalian hair it's something else yeah. so it's it's a feather right um which is yeah. quite interesting so but the but i guess the the kind of conclusion of this is that we researchers paleontologists are still figuring out did did it evolve once very a long time ago in the past did feathers evolve and the dinosaurs can turn it on or off those mm. genes depending on whether they're beneficial or not. Um, and that it is still okay. within their genome that many species down the line might turn on again if it is again beneficial. For sure. Um, or that they just evolve it homologously at, at, a, at a different time they, they do it. Because the, the, there is one more example I have for why that might make sense um as well that they they all evolved it slightly differently and uh, in in different ways yeah, think yeah. of mammals there are several mammals who have evolved at different times convergently um uh, spikes okay. and scales and hard parts things like pangolins uh which people don't like anymore cuz because oh. <laughs> of coronavirus um yeah. <laughs> uh, other things called echidnas and they have this like hard uh kind of exterior that's almost like a, a large scale on their back yeah um and porcupines and hedgehogs they have really hard spiky scales True. um hairs sorry yeah. and so but they're spikes so and they all evolved these on their own they didn't acquire them from a as, as an ancestral trait what about things like dolphins and sharks? Mm-hmm. So it, it, would this be like a similar thing going on? Because dolphins are mammals. Yeah. But sh- sharks are ancient. Sharks, sharks never left the ocean in their evolution. Yeah. But if a dolphin is a mammal, that kind of indicates that it, at one point in its evolution, it was it moved from the sea onto land and then moved back into the sea and kind of convergently evolved to have things like fins and and wide tails and you know things like yeah no and you're absolutely right that's exactly what happened and it's the strangest thing it's the strangest thing about evolution and it's what's so interesting about evolution is the fact that your ancestors could be land mammals and you can go back um and and now when we think of dolf comparing dolphins to sharks they have a very different way of living in the marine environment because sharks yeah. use gills and dolphins use lungs so it's very different in yeah. the way they they breathe and take in oxygen and respire so yeah they it's they are very different um of course but yeah they, there's 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 several ways of doing the same thing is what you're saying because yeah, there is it's it that's really cool and i i actually just want to show you something uh just because i found it whilst you were talking and i think it's awesome okay cool uh this um 
this popped up. All right, one second. This popped up, and I'll be putting images over it for the people who want to watch this on video, yeah. on my thing, where someone on the 21st of December 2021 found a fossilized egg mm. of a o oviraptor, who is one of, in the family of dinosaurs that you were talking yeah, theropods. about. theropods. Theropods. And they were kind of showing that these dinosaurs are quite, you know, they blur that line between birdie or dinosaur they're kind of right in that middle point yeah but being able to find an evolved um over raptor in the embryo they could actually compare the fetal position of it to that of modern chickens oh my god that's that's amazing yeah and it to show the comparison and to show that they developed within the egg in a similar mm -hmm. way and I just thought that was absolutely crazy. It, it, and again, <laughs> and, uh, we're talking so here cool. ancestral trait. So yeah, this exactly. is a and and we I mean mammals um so many animals have things that evolved in the past that maybe we don't use. I mean, we don't we have a tailbone. There's yeah. no point of <laughs> yeah. us having a tailbone, but we do because our ancestors yeah. had tails um very sure. very very long ago before humans evolved and so and and the start of early mammals and vertebrates and everything so um there is uh, this whole and that that's really nice that you said that because it it rounds this out very much that it's okay to think of a lot of dinosaurs having very bird-like features or having very bird-like behaviors and that's maybe one of the most important mm. things from finding all this out. You might say, oh, this is kind of boring that, okay, they have feathers, they look stupid. Um, but not only do they have feathers, but they might actually share behavioral traits. Things like birds almost always take care of their young um, and, and, and until they can fend for themselves. And so that's one big thing. So they take care yeah, of their yeah. hatchlings. Um, they're very social creatures. They, uh, um, there's colonial species of birds like penguins that have these huge, intricate colonies and societies. So yeah. think of dinosaurs having similar colonies oh, cool, and societies. That? It's very cool. Um, but and and then think of the T-Rex so awesome. or the Velociraptor as as a a caring mother who okay will rip a dinosaur's head off and eat it, but it will bring that back to its cute little <laughs> fur fluffy kids that it needs to protect and care for and um, socially <laughs> develop into their own, uh, you know, black eyed killers, That's you know, so just like, I feel like modern mothers uh, if you have watch done it, more uh, for less. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, like you, 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 you see david attenborough documentaries about lions and tigers and the the lone mother or maybe the the troop for lions um or the 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 tribe and the way that they take care of their young and they take care of their family and so no longer are paleontologists thinking of dinosaurs as these stupid kind of lumbering lizards they're really thinking of them more like these quite intelligent, uh, behavioral, wacky species. The 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 thing I'll I'll leave us on is, um, researchers found a really weird set of footprints, and the yeah. only way that they could reconstruct it was that this dinosaur, this theropod with feathers, uh, was doing some sort of dance. And so it was clearly doing maybe a mate because, you know, birds have very birds of paradise in Madagascar have extremely intricate mating dances and mating rituals. And they'll not only will they dance, but they'll completely um, almost set up a stage, a, a little area of the forest floor. They'll make sure there's not a single brown leaf. They're all green. They're beautiful. Their stage looks gorgeous. And they'll do this intricate dance for for a female and so you would imagine yeah. that that might have happened for a lot of species as well um 
as this term that we actually talked about before sexual selection instead of natural selection may have also paid, yeah, yeah. played quite a dominant role in some dinosaurs um so it's just really interesting that's so cool man i'm you know i'm um still disproportionately upset about jurassic park but <laughs> It's really, really cool. It, it is cool, though. It's it, like, I, I think the whole idea of converging evolution and trying to track the way it moved and the way things moved in between niches was really, really cool. So thanks for going through that. Really, really no cool. No bother, man. Oh, I love dinosaurs. Steven Spielberg, get it right next time. On that note, good luck. This is the end of the podcast. We hope you enjoyed your time If you're feeling generous And you're not completely skinned Why don't you give us some of your money Join our Patreon Join our Patreon Join our Patreon Join our baby